When I was at Cornell, I wasn't uh, the best student. Um, and so I knew that if I wanted to go to law school, I'd have to do really well on the LSAT. And so I just tried to prepare for the LSAT in the evenings on my own um, while I was working as a salesman for Revlon in Chicago. And I worked really hard at it. I probably worked harder at that than I've worked at anything else I've ever done in my life um, because I knew what I was up against. Uh, and all I wanted to do was get into a law school. Um, and I remember uh, uh, saying to my wife, um, before I started preparing for the LSAT, I said to Angie, um, I really want to go to law school, but I don't know if I can do what it takes to prepare for the LSAT, given that I've got a full-time job. And I don't know that I can devote myself to the preparation. And she said to me, I'll never forget, she said, you said that God wanted you to be a lawyer. You never said that he wanted you to do it the easy way. So um, I took those words to heart and I worked. I worked. Um, I worked my job during the day and in the evenings, I worked really hard at the LSAT to, to prepare for it. And um, I knew I only had one shot at it. Uh, and when I got that score back, I knew I had a chance to go to law school because I'd gotten almost a perfect score on the LSAT. Had four parts to it. I got a perfect score on three of the four parts and I missed one question cluster on the fourth part. Um, and I knew at that point that I would have a shot. I, uh, with my grades from Cornell, I knew I couldn't go to, to just any school, but with that LSAT, I knew that I had a shot at going to a good school. So I applied to a bunch of schools and I got in almost everywhere. Um, uh, I got waitlisted at Yale. Um, I didn't get into Harvard or Stanford, um, but uh, I did get into Notre Dame and I got into Northwestern. Um, and uh, several other schools, Columbia, Georgetown, places that I thought, thought I had no chance of getting into.